Good afternoon, gardeners. It's Thursday, April 15th, and it's a gorgeous spring afternoon here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I want to show you all how to fix a standing water ponding issue in your raised bed garden. I built my first beds for my raised bed garden when I moved into my property in October of 2018. And I decided my garden was not big enough. So in the winter of 2019, 2020, I went through a massive garden expansion project that I documented in great detail. And I'll link to that playlist above. And when I expanded my garden, what I did was I built raised beds around the entire garden to lock in the garden and then fence it in. And I wanted to do that in order to maximize growing space. However, when I did that I created a little problem for myself that I did not think of at the time. Now my backyard pitches down and all the water drains away from the back of my house to the back of my fence to a little creek that is behind my property and that's excellent for the overall drainage of the yard. However it posed a problem with my raised bed garden. Because I locked in my entire garden with raised beds what was happening was when we would get torrential rains in the summer all of the water would wind up ponding in the back right corner of my garden because that was the lowest spot and I was having a massive flooding issue and back here is the right rear corner of my garden. It's the lowest spot and it's where all the water would rush into when we'd get torrential rains. And that's why you see all of this debris around here. It was creating a mess. The water level would rise over the raised beds and then it would carry out the top layers of soil and wash out to the back of my property. So what I did was I temporarily jacked up this bed and I put in a little drain and a PVC pipe under this area so any water would drain. And it did work, but now I have this raised bed that's all jacked up and I have a bunch of undermining that's happening underneath the raised bed. So because of that, I haven't been able to use this raised bed. So now I actually want to fix this problem permanently. So when I put this conduit out on the other side, it also uprooted my fence here and that now creates an entry point for things to get into the garden. So that's something else that also needs to be fixed. And funny story, when I first moved into this property, uh, the backyard was really overgrown. I hadn't quite fixed it up yet and got it to where it needs to be. And my very first spring, a mother rabbit came in and she gave birth to bunnies in the yard in the back where the weeds were still pretty high out in the woods. And ever since then, she has been coming back year after year after year. Dale, come here. Now last year, we got this little guy right here and he is a hound dog with a little bit of pit bull in him. So he loves, absolutely loves going on the hunt. And last year, he found out the hard way that the bunnies came back. Uh, the mommy came back and she must have dug a burrow uh, right up against the house and she had the baby bunnies underground and he located the baby bunny nest and he dug them up and we heard screaming in the backyard and he was using a little bunny as a chew toy running around with the poor little bunny in his mouth but luckily I was able to rescue the bunnies I was able to collect them and I was able to dump them off safely in the woods. The bunnies weren't injured. However, we just noticed just the other day, Dale has become obsessed with this spot right here. And he would sit here and he wouldn't move. And when he'd go sniffing around, we'd start hearing some squeaking underneath this bed right here. So there also may be a bunny's nest underneath this bed. And I need to get them out of here because I certainly don't want them chowing down on all the greens that are newly planted in my garden because a nest of bunnies can make short work of your whole season in no time. Now I keep a thin mulch layer on all of my raised beds because I like to protect the top inch of soil from the UV rays of the sun. So if you keep a mulch layer on your beds like I do, you want to pull all of that mulch off first because we're going to dig out the soil in the bed and you don't want to mix the mulch and the soil together. You want to try and keep them separate. So first let's remove the mulch. And now that we've removed all the mulch, I'm going to dig out the soil. And now we're going to pull our raised bed up and we're going to remove it from the area. And we're going to pull up our conduit here. Now all I have here is a two inch piece of plumbing pipe. Uh, this plumbing pipe is going to be basically my drain pipe. And at the edge of it, I have one of these drain guards that I picked up at Lowe's for maybe four or five dollars. They're over by the French drain material. And you can use, um, you can use plumbing pipe, you can use underground electrical conduit if that's what you want to use. All you need 
is something that you can pitch so the water will run through the top here you need some kind of trap with grates on it that will stop debris from flowing through the pipe uh, the pipe and clogging it up and as long as it's pitched like this as long as it has a downward slope and slopes away from your garden the water will rush out this other end so all i'm going to do is i'm going to place this back underground comfortably below my raised bed but make it so this top piece protrudes through and the water can flow through here and dump out of my garden so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these hand trowels and I'm going to dig a trench uh, in between my raised beds at the low spot and I'm going to make it so uh, I can pitch this pipe outside of my garden. That way it'll carry all of the water away. So now we have our pipe in place. And if you look, I put a level on top of the pipe, and you will notice that the grate side of the pipe is higher than the end. So that means that the water is going to easily flow through that grate, and it's going to travel to where I have the pipe stubbed out over here. And it's all going to exit the end of that pipe. I was also able to feed the pipe through the fence, and I was able to bury the fence. So now I've closed up that one entry point where annoying critters can get into my garden. So now I should have a safer garden with better drainage and I'll be able to reuse this raised bed again. So now I'm going to backfill all around this pipe and lock it into place and then put my raised bed back. So now the bed is back and it looks a whole lot better. It is much more level. It's not completely perfect, but for my purposes, it looks really good. And we were able to repair the fence and eliminate the entry point so no pests will now be able to get into my garden. So let's test it out and make sure it works. And here it is draining out into the lawn. Now I extended the conduit underneath the weed barrier from the garden so that way it wouldn't drain around the walking area, it would drain more into the grassy area where it has the ability to handle the extra water. And just like that, I should be able to keep the water out from ponding around my garden in that low spot. And it looks like I got done working just in time. We're about to get dumped on by a spring thunderstorm. So everyone, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products I use in my garden, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching. And I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Go Dale, go! Go, buddy! Get the giggle ball! Go, go, go! Oh. Gonna get him! Gonna get him! Gonna get him! Gonna get his hiney! Gonna get him! Ah, ah, ow! <laughs> Tail, you got me with your claws! Oh, there he goes! There he goes! Boy, buddy. Oh, he's vicious. He's vicious. He's vicious. He's got a lot of energy today.